Alright, this is going to be Chapter 5, Ethics and the Paramedic. And key concepts we're going to talk about here are going to be conduct and responsibility derived from guiding principles as well as cultural and religious benefits. And we're going to understand all these concepts. We're going to talk about them here uh, in detail, pretty much. Duty-based ethics are founded on principles, not consequences. Bioethics and their application to day-to-day decision-making. The idea of what is right, awareness of patient dignity, privacy, and autonomy, understanding how ethical principles and their proper application can help resolve ethical dilemmas. And the first thing we're going to do here is define ethics. So uh, it comes from the Greek word ethos, meaning character system of guiding principles and it pretty much governs our, governs our conduct and there are factors that uh, influence a person's ethics. Uh, first of all we're going to talk about here is religion and what religion does is it provides people with, with a description of what is right and what is wrong. And then we have culture that is also involved in ethics. Uh, and there's several things as far as culture goes. Um, unique activities a culture is and symbols that make one's group or condition differ from another's and this would be dress, language, or specific rituals. Uh, workplace, workplaces can have culture. Um, may provide a sense of higher purpose. Uh, example of this performing a value service versus just a job so you really like your job, you think that you perform a valued service. Some paramedics have a personal code of conduct or morality um, which is a mere reflection of the culture where they actually work. Personal system of beliefs also comes into culture and this is based on higher principles. It takes a strong personal belief system and a strong sense of morality to withstand ethical challenges that you'll face as a paramedic. Medical ethics, <clears throat> how paramedics behave in regard to their actual patients. And in medical ethics, Van Rensselaer Potter kind of come up with the idea of bioethics. It is the guiding principles for medical practitioners, um, form of applied ethics, and this is used in general day-to-day -day decision making. And this came to prominence during the 1960s. Examples of this were the reason that it did come to prominence was medical advances were being questioned and the example because technology was uh, developing so rapidly in vitro fertilization, abortion, lots of ethical questions. Should we do this? Just because we can doesn't mean we should. Holds that an unconsidered decision that results in harm to the patient is unethical. Uh, controversial subjects have advocates on both sides and consensus is to, is used to come to uh, come up with the answers so whenever we have controversy on both sides uh, we pretty much get a consensus of everyone that would be on our ethics committee and with that's where we're going to kind of go with um, if conduct has risen to the level of criminal activity paramedics have a responsibility to report the crime to the proper authorities if the conduct is non-criminal but is unethical the paramedic also has the duty to report the conduct to management and or civil authorities and this came to prominence in the 1960s as well foundations for value judgments and these are essentially our models that we can plug into or the models of ethics if you will uh, teleological model of ethics states that the ends pretty much justifies the means. Uh, performing the procedure outweighs the outcomes of not performing it. Deontological model of ethics acknowledges that harm may occur but paramedics must perform their duty and this is kind of a universal law. This also brings into question or brings into play paramedics and physicians alike subscribe to first we must do no harm and then last but not least ethical model of virtue ethics and this is kind of a middle ground approach uh, does not depend on consequences driven decisions or duty driven decisions but upon the virtues of the medic themselves a right thinking person will make the best decision 
um, may be intrinsic, which, which an example of this would be from a compassion source, may be extrinsic or divine command ethics, and this is predetermined by uh, qualities of higher authority. So Christianity, um, Buddhism, whatever high, higher authority that you subscribe to. Personal rights and moral obligations. A right is loosely defined as something to which a person is entitled, and these are based on society's sense of fair play. There are three types. There are natural rights, human rights, and legal rights. A national right is an, um, a function of existing in a society or a group. And an example of this would be freedom of expression. A human right, universally accepted standards of justice, and legal rights are afforded by the government in the form of laws. Moors and paramedic, and a moor is pretty much a moral attitude. Uh, social norm is a rule of conduct that regulates the interaction between people but is not specific to one individual. Moors are more of a social custom and they are a collective agreement or moral obligation that goes beyond basic human rights. An example of this would be stopping at a traffic accident whenever you are off duty. Now whenever you are off duty the patient there is no duty to act because you are off duty. However if you ask some paramedics that they would say that well it's a I feel that that's a moral obligation that I could have helped. Foundation of bioethics we have the Hippocratic Oath, and the Hippocratic Oath defined those ethical principles that physician was to follow, and two concepts out of this is benefeasance and non-malfeasance, and we'll talk about those here in just a second. There was a manual cant, which kind of redefined the Hippocratic Oath and redefined the subject of medical ethics, and then we kind of hold Thomas Percival, um, accountable for the last version of this and or the one that we the American Medical Association adopted anyway and he developed the first medical code of ethics and this is table 5 1 in your book and this was adopted by the American Medical Association in 1846 concepts of bioethics and here's where we'll talk about those benefeasance and non-malfeasance. So we have some general terms here that we need to go over. Respect for humanity and dignity uh, addresses the right of every person to be treated respectfully. Uh, re and this is regardless of his or her station in life. So the point of this is you have a duty to be non-judgmental. Patient autonomy would be the next one. Patient's ability to control her person and her personal destiny through decision making um, could decide to do nothing about a fatal illness and that would be their right privacy condition of being secluded from view opinion or intrusion by others and we actually have federal mandates on this called HIPAA laws and they're federally regulated and the point of this is any kind of unauthorized disclosure of their actual privacy or what would be considered privacy compromises present and future patient care because you've essentially just burned that patient to ever trusting anybody in our profession again veracity truth and adherence to truthfulness um, essential for the therapeutic patient relationship and this also creates a legal bond fidelity obligation to keep promises that are made. Next term we're going to talk about here is benefeasance. Actions are an act of mercy and charity, a good act performed for people at a time of need, good Samaritan, benefeasance. Non-malfeasance, no act of harm will be will be done. An example of this is first do no harm. Justice the application of the concept of fairness implies impartiality 
in the administration of rewards. EMS Code of Ethics and this serves as a standard for the profession and a bias by which practitioners facilitate resolution of ethical dilemmas. So this is the gold standard so to speak. Moral rules and particular circumstances here. So ethical obligation. The public has come to expect that its emergency medical service system is its public health safety net. So we're kind of the catch-all net for everything that goes on in, in public health. It's an ethical burden to respond to calls for health. Uh, our calls, they should be immediate, not concerned with any kind of fairness. We were dispatched. We should go. Allocation of scarce medical resources and this brings up this is a particular circumstance and the medical utility model is the one we kinda go with assumes that those with the best prognosis should be treated with the limited resources and this is a form of utilitarianism ethics and EMS research and following World War II they come up with Nuremberg Code for ethical conduct uh, and this was enhanced by Helensky Declaration of 1964. And currently all medical research is governed under federal regulation. Medical research is monitored by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. An institutional review board is required for medical research and this is made up of experts in theology, sociology, psychology, and medicine. That the actual benefits on this research outweighs the risks. For the patients. End of life decisions. They're complicated by the definition of death. An absence of a heartbeat and breathing or the absence of life. Now current technologies in EMS and advanced life support uh, permit a patient to be in a persistent vegetative state. Permanent states of unconsciousness with an intact brain stem that will produce a heartbeat and breathing. Most agree that biological death occurs whenever the brain is dead. A uh, paramedic encounters patients all the time who are near death and may be called to make CPR decisions. An ethics committee helps individuals deal with common ethical concerns, guidance with end of life decisions, and the typically they're the same makeup as the institutional review board. Uh, generally uh, mission is to foster awareness of ethical concerns. And in conclusion, paramedics are confronted with ethical dilemmas, health related questions, understanding ethical principles and their proper application can help the paramedic resolve ethical dilemmas and allow the paramedic to continue to provide care without hesitation. References for this chapter are from the Professional Paramedic, Volume 1, Foundations of Paramedic Care, First Edition, pages 70 through 81, Delmar Learning. If you have any questions concerning this chapter, feel free to contact me. My name is Roy Smith, smithr at imsa.net or 405-219-7613. Thank you.